I think if you talk to any head teacher now, the, the main topic of conversation in terms of fear for the future doesn't tend to be Ofsted and it doesn't tend to be impending exam results. It's about how they're going to fund in the coming year. And it's a major issue for, for the vast majority of head teachers. The government will say, of course, that there's more funding going into education than there has ever been. Uh, yeah. And actually, there's plenty of money in there and it's down to the schools to manage those budgets. There's a reality here. You know, 70% of my budget is staffing budget. The rest is fixed budget. I mean, we've, we've pared down enormously on catering, on utilities, on cleaning, all those sorts of things. Then we have to look at staffing. And staffing is what, where you deliver. The really interesting thing is this has to be seen in the context of all the other cuts that we're facing within social care, within the support services available to schools. Three years ago, I had an on-site police officer. I had social worker placed in school. I had, um, I had a counselling service. We had access to child and mental health services were accessible. All those have been cut. We have to replicate those. We have to reproduce and, and, and support our young people with services that we provide. So as we're cutting our frontline staff, we're also having to replace services which were available in the past. It's, it's a really, really difficult situation. And Toby, you're, you say, though, it's bad management then, essentially, by head teachers who aren't able to balance the books. Well, um, the Institute for Fiscal Studies um, claims, uh, they've, they've calculated that the amount of money spent on schools since 1997, between 1997 and 2015, has increased by roughly 100%. In primary schools, it increased by 114%. But and this per is, pupil, this is in real the spending terms. has gone down, though. No, this is in, uh, over that 15, over that 18-year period, but in real terms, we... per pupil funding increased by roughly 100% We've in the got this English state head. sector that total school spending per pupil has fallen around 8% in real terms in England between 2009 to 10 and 2017 to 18. Yeah, so, so, so it's fallen by about 8% in real terms per pupil yes. since 2000. But between 1997 and 2015, it also increased by about 100%. It's gone down a little bit, but having increased by 100%, a little bit... Uh, a, a small reduction of a few percent should be manageable. As Jez says, one of the reasons uh, uh, it's difficult to manage is because 70% of school budgets goes on staff and English teachers are amongst the best paid in the world. They're in the top 10 in Europe. Something like 1,300 head teachers last year are on more than £100,000 a year. You sometimes got to listen to the people who are on the ground, the people who are trying to deliver. On a day-to-day -day basis, those head teachers are to trying to deliver the best education, the best curriculum, but the best social care for their students as well. And to say that they're not managing those budgets, you've got an example on that film, right? Every school is renting out its premises, every school is taking advertising, every school is, is outsourcing every single... Uh, every single part of the provision they've got. We have tried every single thing. Sometimes you have to sit there and you have to say, if we want to compete, if we want to be up there with the Singapores and the internationals that, that are on that level, we have to put funding into this. But and that's Jez, the bottom line. But Jez, if, if your per-pupil funding doubled in real terms between 97 and 2015, which is what the IFS says it has, why should you be in a position whereby you're having to say ask okay. parents to make contributions for toilet paper? Right, here you, you go. Here's why. Because pension contributions, because there's something called the apprentice contribution that I have to make, because the incremental shift on my staff, I have a young staff every year, their wages go up, I have extra costs over and over again which add to those costs. But if there's your budgets no... have doubled, why can't you accommodate those costs? Because increases? it's not... It, you look at the IFS report, it's 8% in real terms. That's right, what that we goes faced. back to 2015, but if you... It goes back to 2000. If you go back before that, uh, your budgets uh, doubled. In primary, they more than doubled. I think the reason for this protest, I'm afraid to say, is because it's fundamentally that so many teachers want a new, want a Labour government. This is this is a, this right. is a political protest dressed up as a protest about cuts. At the last uh, sorry. Sorry. at the last general election, only nine percent of teachers. I think you can debunk that myth by the fact that this is actually from outside London. This protest came from Sussex. It comes from the home counties. It comes from up north. It isn't generated from from London, I mean, where the is, traditional not... element of, of that sort of militancy. When we make. look at the number of schools that are affected by this, that are reporting difficulties with the budgets, you know, it's not isolated cases, is it? Where it's you know if you were saying one or two head teachers that aren't doing, uh, you know, balancing the books as they should do. But earlier this year, figures showed the number of secondary schools in England running at a loss had nearly trebled in four years. So the sub substantial number who are having difficulties like this. Yeah, and the reason they're having difficulties is because where the money, the extra money uh, that's gone into schools over the past 20, 25 years or so, where it's gone for the most part 
has been on the expansion of senior leadership teams right. within schools. Head teachers, in addition to paying themselves much more, have taken on but additional want, senior so, leaders but, but in order to delegate always, responsibilities. If we want to get the best head teachers, we want to get the best teachers, then we need to pay good money. And if they are worth the money, then they are delivering. And that's actually what's key. The, Often the argument is that lots of sort of people that could be great teachers will turn around and go, I'm going to work, earn more money in the city. So you, leave, you lose quite a lot of that resource because they're going to follow the money. If we can in, improve pay to some of those teachers, then we can retain some of the great staff, uh, great teachers, and then the pupils benefit in the long but, term. But teach, our teachers are amongst the best paid in the world. As but I the, said, they're, amongst the, they're, they're in the top ten best paid in much? Europe. And that's one of they're the paid reasons. Too much, then? I don't think they're paid too much, but I think one of the reasons um, school improvement uh, ha has happened over the past uh, eight years or so, and we've seen something like two million fewer people being educated uh, in um, uh, uh, failing schools mm -hmm. uh, today than there were eight years ago, is because we do have great but teachers who, for the most part, do a great job. And one of, the, one of the things that upsets me about this particular demonstration is if you want to make a political point about the government, if you want to campaign for a Labour government, do it on Saturdays. Don't do it on a Friday, which is yeah, on the yeah, taxpayer's time. This you should be in school it's it's on the, Friday running your school. It's a myth to, to say Friday. that we, you know, in terms of not managing budgets, it's because heads are paid so much. Those heads that are paid that sort of money are inevitably running MATS, multi-academy trusts, they're running two or three schools, they're improving services and they're delivering across mm -hmm. local authorities. That's where the money goes. And it's exactly as you say, it's market forces. Sue says if she's a head teacher, best, she doesn't get anywhere near £100,000, nah. nor does most primary head colleagues. No, but what primary about head that, colleagues, the average Jeff, for primary head colleagues is about £60,000. So Jeff, one, of the, one, of the, one of the points Toby has made that will jar with parents this morning, of course, is that the head teachers are doing this protest on a Friday. Why are they doing it on a Friday? As Ian Dale pointed out, there's no politicians in, in London on a Friday. So why do it on a Friday? Why not do it on a Saturday when you're going to garner a lot more support? From and why now? Could it be because what you've the got to Tory party at, conference is about but What you've got to look at is you will see a, a huge demographic across those head teachers. You won't just see Labour supporters, you will see across all political parties. And the reason they're doing it today is because actually what they want to do is get that publicity. It isn't a political move. What have they got? What political gain have they got by taking that time out? It's a hard decision to make. Any teacher who withdraws their Labour from a school or takes themselves away during a school day, and I know that, takes that decision really not lightly at all. And those people would have taken the time to think very, very carefully to push people to this limit, to push head teachers, and you think this is the first time that this has happened, there must be something wrong. And unless we actually acknowledge there's a reality here, and on the ground, on a day-to-day -day basis, we're struggling to mm -hmm. meet the needs of some of our most vulnerable students.